Hi, I'm going to show you how to dismantle a Bangle.js 2 watch. So, um, these watches, they don't have any screws on them. Um, you have to disable them in a similar way to an iPhone by heating up the screen and, um, and then melting the glue around the edge of it enough that you can pull it off with the suction cup. So, um, first step really is to remove the, um, the straps, which is easy enough to do. Um, you just need to pull that back and then they just come off really nicely and easily. Um, so then um, other things I think would be a really good idea to have. A pair of tweezers, um, quite fine. A very thin, very sharp knife um, and a small Phillips screwdriver for the screws once you get inside. Um, then you actually need to heat up your, um, your bangle. Now this is a hot plate. Um, this is a temperature controlled thing. These cost about thirty dollars at the moment for this particular one. This one, the lowest you can set the temperature to is a hundred degrees C, um, which is actually too hot for the bangle. So you've got to keep an eye on it and turn it off when it hits about ninety. Um, and then you just keep it like that for a little while. Keep turning it on, turning it off to make sure that the heat can get all the way through. And then we'll have a go at, um, at pulling off the display. It's very, very important that you don't overheat the display. Um, because if you do, something like this can happen, where the display gets discoloured in the corner. Um, and, you know, it's, yeah, everything still works. Um, but it's just, um, it's just nowhere near as nice now. And this display, it may come back and become usable again, um, but it's kind of, it, it's quite likely that it won't. It's vitally important that you stay below 100 degrees C, um, and that you, that, you know, this may not work first time, you may have to, to ramp up more and more, um, but, um, but yeah, that you just keep trying slowly and give it time. The other thing to watch out for is that um, the display of your bangle, it will discolour when it gets hot, and that's fine. As long as you don't overheat it, it will just come back. So let's have a go at pulling this up then. Um, just, oh, there we go. So let's, you want to be very careful when you pull it, that you, you don't pull it so hard that it comes away a, a, a long way. So now I've got that off, let's take the suction cup off and um, have a look inside. Assuming that this is the big area at the bottom, the display can fold away that way because there's a ribbon cable on it. So let's just this sheet. So the ribbon cable just sits in there. So you want to hold this back and using a knife or pair of tweezers, just ping this up here from the bottom. Like that. And now the display can be completely removed. So, um, inside the bangle, the adhesive sits around the edge. Um, when you put the display back, um, you'll have to come up with new adhesive. Um, probably like a sort of silicon adhesive might be a, a good bet here. Um, so then when you've got this, there are three screws. One here, um, which is by the flash chip, which is this. Um, there's another screw here by where the um, display connector was, and there's another screw here, uh, which is actually by the, the GPS area. So then, to get the, uh, um, to get the PCB out, you need to detach this, which is the heart rate monitor sensor wire. Uh, and you probably also want to take this one out, which is the button. Um, so to do this one, you flip the back edge back until that little dark bit is vertical. And then you can slowly take out the dis the, um, the ribbon cable. It, and this is the little button PCB. It's very hard to see, but there's a little button on there. Um, so now the PCB can come out this way. The GPS aerial needs to be the last thing to leave because it's kind of stuck in there at the bottom. But um, then you can raise the 
uh, PCB out. Now you've got the um, vibration motor here, this is the flash chip, you've got the GPS, um, you've got the processor, and then on the other side, um, obviously the battery, and you can't really see very much else. This is the Bluetooth aerial connector, and the Bluetooth aerial connector mates to this little bit of, of foil here, which is actually a an aerial that's on the side of the watch case. Um, these are the magnets for attaching the um, uh, the charging strap, and these little pegs here, these are for each of the um, uh, the programming pins and the um, the charge pins that are on the back. So next step, put it back. You just want to put GPS in out, aerial in first. Careful not to um, snag the the heart rate monitor sensor wire. Just get that back in. Need a little bit of fiddling. Let's try this again. There we go. Again, the, the GPS aerials just got to settle back right in there. The heart rate sensor can just ping down and press in. The button PCB goes in a little slot here. And then the wire pokes back in there. And that flips down to lock it in place. So the aerial, so the button just sits down in this little slot. Right. And now you just need to um, screw this back up, and then you can put the display back on again that way around, so that the um, uh, so the connector fits back on. Um, and that's it. So, um, <sighs> common issues with the watch, the very early ones, there was an issue with the button PCB. Um, obviously you might have, you might have scratched your display and, or cracked it and want to change that. Um, and we do have spares of these that are currently without the backlight at the moment. We do have some spares of the, um, the button PCB as well. Um, otherwise, uh, potentially there's, uh, the Bluetooth aerial here um, might just not be connected very well. Um, just just moving the PCB around might fix that. Um, but yeah, there are there are other test pads here. Um, if you're interested in doing things with your watch, um, the test pads for the LED um, and also some GPS ones, I think, on the back as well. Um, so yeah, that's how you get in the watch and um, how you reassemble it. Thanks for watching.